All right, guys, so we're not going to do a race week series this week. I'm um, here at the Collins Cup. And the reason why is because the PTO is doing such an excellent job with content this week. And that's why we usually do the race week episodes, because a lot of times there is no content. And so you don't really know who's in the race and what's happening. So if you want to see the race week content, check out the PTO's YouTube channel. And they've also been kind enough to let us put the second episode of the Beyond Human documentary onto our YouTube uh, channel, which is what follows. What are we doing Beyond Human? <laughs> so tell me, has anything changed since we last met? <laughs> Beyond Human, episode two. The Collins Cup is almost here. When that gun goes, it is anybody's game. A head-to-head -head showdown between the best triathletes in the world. There'll be nowhere to hide. There's nothing that makes you so proud. Triathlon's the epitome of redefining what's possible. It's in your bones, it's in your soul. It's all encompassing to the depth of your being. On the 28th of August, 2021, 36 of the world's best athletes will descend on San Marin, Slovakia for a competition like no other. It's between Team Europe, Team America, and Team International, and will determine who rules triathlon. The Collins Cup will be the biggest race in the history of our sport. It's head to head. It is mano a mano. No one really knows what it'll look like. You're not just competing for yourself. Let's go kick some ass, Team USA. Let's go get it done. Lionel, you got this! I do feel pretty confident I can break these people. In the Collins Cup, Lionel's team, Team International, will have their work cut out for them. They are the outsiders, the global misfits, Canadians, Australians, New Zealanders, all together. They'll have to do something very special to beat the Europeans. Why is Europe the favorite? In my mind, they're like basically unbeatable. Why we are the favorites? I think it's a pretty easy answer. Jan Frodeno and Gustav Eden. And hog. I think we will be hard to beat. We have so many talented athletes. That's why they're the favourites. Over this distance, I would say the Americans are probably the number two seed. The internationals are the underdog. I don't think I can sit here and say, oh, America is 100% going to win. I mean, We've already got all of the Team Europe guys doing that. There will be a huge amount of tactics. It's a 1v1v1 format, so it's three people at a time. This is the intriguing part, who you pair against who. Are we going to stack our strongest athlete against the strongest athletes on the other team, or are we going to forfeit a round? There's so much to think about in this completely new dynamic that we've never had before. I'm looking in that like it's a mirror. Like <laughs> well, maybe it is. <laughs> so we're here today um, in our lovely pain cave. It's been taken over by film crews and camera crews. We're doing a little bit of uh, pre-promotion work, I guess, for the Collins Cup, which is going to take place at the end of August in Slovakia. So we're just doing some stills today and a little bit of filming in the build-up to that. I probably was quite a hyperactive child. My parents say that I was like born with this fight. Yeah! Even as an eight year old, I always wanted to win. I would feel like I was born with that mentality. To be a top level athlete, you do need to have that sadistic love of pain. 
pain is very important to me. I love pain in training, I love pain in racing, and I think when I'm up the front of the race and I'm hurting so hard, I'm just thinking, well, the other girls are either hurting just as much, if not more, and they need to gain time on me because I'm leading. Pain pays a big part in triathlon. I was nine years old, I wanted to swim the 200 butterfly. There's not many nine-year-olds that want to swim 200 butterfly. As I developed, I was like, what's harder than 200 butterfly? And I would do some medley racing, like the 400 IM, and then I would find distance swimming and was like, okay, that's harder because it lasts longer. Um, and then eventually found open water swimming and the marathon swim. So I always wanted the next biggest challenge. Lucy Charles Barkley is mentally one of the toughest competitors in the world of triathlon. She craves competition and relishes all challenges. Her swim is such a weapon that if you get paired against Lucy at the Collins Cup, you'll have to chase her down to win. I will be the first swimmer out of the water. My record is definitely 100% since I started triathlon. I'm just too stubborn to <laughs> let anyone else have that. My biggest motivator is to just find out where my limits lie. How far can I physically push myself? Can I break the records, go faster than anyone ever has in the history of this sport? The business end of the season is approaching. There's the World Championships, there's the Collins Cup. I'm very excited about what we have achieved already, but I'm more excited about what is to come and what can be achieved later in the year. I have never loved swimming more than I love swimming now. I thought about leaving here to go somewhere cooler so that I could train and not kill myself through the heat and have to change my natural patterns. But I have such a great relationship with my swim coach here. 12-2, nice job. Three smooth 25s. It's gotten significantly better at moving through the water. So whether that translates into like more actual speed on the clock, we don't really know and we don't really care. Uh, but as far as like moving through the water efficiently, with a lower heart rate, feeling, feeling like he's expending more and less energy, um, man, he's just gotten like leaps and bounds better. For the longest time, I was muscling the water. I was all caught up in the times and you've got to swim this particular time. If you're not doing that, then you're not going to be competitive. I am seeing truly a, a change in my mental aspect of swimming. He's learned to, to feel the water a little better and, and start to really get a good perception of how how much force he needs to apply on the water to move himself through it. And that's the whole secret of swimming, is how, how do I manipulate this stuff, this crazy stuff called water, and move myself through it without just spinning my wheels out. I'm feeling and I'm learning to use the water. I think the synapses, all those things are strengthening. And I believe that's really the only difference between myself and the guys who are, are swimming at the front. Am I going to have a front pack swim in Kona this year? Probably not. But can I see the pathway to a front pack swim one day? Absolutely. Bye.
going up to Elk Lake for a swim in the lake, open water. Pools are pretty busy here now that everything's open, so it's nice to escape up to where there's no people and do a little open water practice. It's also going to be super hot today, so it'll feel nice to swim in the cold lakes. I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta. It's the capital of Alberta in Canada. Did you have a comfortable upbringing? <laughs> this is what you're trying to get out of me if I like suffered as a child. As a child, I was stubborn and also quite shy. I was a little bit hard to live with in, in a stubborn way. And I think that part of that was just my nature of like wanting to work hard and be a perfectionist. Does say no animals on that side. He's a human. He's our fur baby. Okay. What are we? What are we doing? Just open it up. Uh, yeah, but for like our course and the swim <laughs> and you know life, how does this fit into our plan for winning the Collins Cup? We are going for an open water swim in this beautiful lake. No people, perfect temperature. Um, open water swimming is just like the best practice for triathlon. And I think a lot of triathletes don't do it enough. So we're doing, there and back is about a K, I think, I remember. Yeah. 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 Touch that zip up. The really important races are Collins Cup in August, and then in the fall there's a ton of races. Using this month and a half as like a little bit of base building, taking a bit of time off running, and then building up for the Collins Cup will hopefully get me to those races in my best form. I am very different when I get into a race and the start gun goes off. I'm insanely competitive and want to win, but I don't feel that way every single day. I don't have super high confidence in myself or anything. When I watch people like Lionel Sanders or Danielle Larif or Ian Ferdano, I'm inspired by how they're pushing the limits of the, what we ever thought was possible in the sport and how fast they are and how good they are. Paula Finley is a really exciting athlete because you don't know what you're going to get with her. She's been written off before and after Daytona, no one will make that mistake again. I have like one off performances where I do really well. After Daytona, I think anything is possible in terms of my potential as a triathlete. Paula Finley from Canada, the 2020 PTO champion. I would love to be a world champion in triathlon at some distance. That is a little ambitious and probably won't happen, but <laughs> that would be my dream goal. In the preparation leading up to Daytona, I had a problem on the calf and by just being stupid and doing stupid things, I made it worse. That was part of the reason why I didn't finish the race. The athletes are ready and we're ready as well. The cannon goes off. Sebastian Kinley, who arguably is the fastest bike rider on the course today, along with the likes of Lionel Sanders, is only one minute down. Not sure what is going on with Sebastian Kinley, but he's slowed right down and pulled off the course. Yeah, I completely fucked it up. After the race, I had a, a longer running break, but after I restarted running, I immediately felt, okay, the Achilles also might have some damage. At the beginning, I was, okay, damage control, we're gonna manage this, it's gonna be fine. Since I had this problem in the past, I know it, it's easy to continue for quite some time. I knew what I need to do to get it better. Then after the first two races, it was pretty obvious that I'm gonna have a major problem if I just continue like that. I 
I can't make another like full preparation for the most important races that are coming up with an injury like that. Not against the competition we have in our sport now. Going to a strict rehab routine, so it's not a lot of like actual real training. Um, yeah, today it was a physio session with some uh, shockwave treatment and just trying to always keep the calf happy and the, and the tendon happy. Probably the most important question in our sport is to know how far you can push without destroying yourself. I've obviously done that in the lead up to Daytona and I'm still very, very mad at myself. I built an environment around myself with people I trust. And in that moment, I wasn't able to tell them, like, there's something wrong, you know, uh, maybe we need to take a step back. No, I wanted to, to go all out and make it harder. At my age, you should not do these mistakes anymore. Sebastian Kinlay has been fighting for fitness since Daytona. But this man is one of the best there has ever been. This man has done everything. He's won everything. Regardless of his fitness, there's not many athletes who will fancy their chances if they're paired against him. There's usually not a lot of races where I'm off. I will always be able to bring something on that day. He's a very tough individual. Somebody that likes to be in a race in a head-to-head -head battle. Sebi is just the man. When he's been crushing it, he's just been at his peak. I always just respect an athlete that's going to show up on the start line and it's basically going to say, you can do whatever little silly fairy games you want and I'm still going to rip your legs off and win. No one has more experience in Samarin than Kinai. So you'd be stupid to leave Kinai off the team. I have the experience and if I'm fully fit then I'm for sure one of the best four guys in Europe. My name is Sam Long. I am a professional triathlete. I'm pursuing being the best athlete in the world. I think it's just a matter of when, not a question of if. This is actually where I went to middle school, and this is when I first started running. Uh, my first ever mile, I came out and I ran uh, 628 in gym class, just completely off the couch, and uh, my gym teacher was a little bit impressed for zero run training, and that's kind of when it all started. When I was 18 years old, I jumped off a cliff skiing, and I tore my MCL. The first thing you can do back from that is rehab, is actually swimming. And then the next thing you can do is, is bike on a stationary trainer with a knee brace. My dad said, why don't you do Ironman Boulder? I loved it. I said, I can do it as my rehab, I can do it as a rite of passage of graduating high school, and I signed up. I won my age group by 50 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> been hooked ever since. Sam Long is exciting, loud, brash, and improving at an incredible rate. He's a top-ranked American and will be looking to upset as many people as possible on and off the course. My mental wiring is something that's pretty unique to me, and that's actually my biggest competitive advantage over any type of physical attributes I may or may not have. I love to be out on the bike all day on my own. 10 hours on the bike, pushing all day is basically my favorite day imaginable and I don't think most people would say that, even the other top pros. I'm a bit different. Yo, yo, yo! I don't know, that's all I know about him. Big personality, big old personality. I don't know if it's for show. <laughs> He is definitely a big mouse for sure. He brings some spice to the sport, it's great.
We don't want to have guys that are all lookalikes and clones and talking the same bullshit all the time. It's good that he's pushing a couple of buttons. I don't think I ever really say anything that would push buttons. 50% of the stuff that I want to say, I don't say, and that's the stuff that would really get me in trouble. And then I say things that I think are completely vanilla and, and atomic bombs go off. I don't know if we should call it a talent. If, is it a talent to rub people the wrong way or is it a curse? Whatever it is, whatever it is, I've got it. You create the, the monsters who will destroy you. Jan and Sebastian have created me, me becoming a better swimmer, a better biker, a better runner, having to be mentally stronger. They've created that. Sam Long is going to literally devote his career to destroy me. That's what he wants to do. If you can come and destroy me, then destroy me. No problem. If you look up to them too much and think of them as too much of gods, then you'll never have a chance of beating them. As I've progressed as an athlete, I've, I've had to sort of play mind tricks with myself to, to bring them off of that pedestal so that I've been able to compete with them. I'm just focused on improving. In 2021, all eyes are on the inaugural Collins Cup. It's happening on August 28th in San Marin, Slovakia. It's a massive moment for the sport. Each race will be between three athletes, one from each team. There's 36 athletes taking part, which means there'll be 12 races in all. It will consist of a two kilometer swim, 80 kilometer bike, and an 18 kilometer run. 100 kilometers of all out action. It's been on everyone's mind this whole year. The qualification, the build up to it, the uniqueness of it. All of those things are a new dynamic that a lot of athletes are not used to. You're not just competing for yourself. You're competing for a team and you don't want to let the team down. Within teams and between teams and there's probably going to be some butting of heads. The points are awarded for first, second and third. First place gets your team three points, second place two points, and third place one point. But it doesn't stop there. If you win by over two minutes, you get a half point bonus. If you win by over four minutes, you get a one point bonus. And if you beat your competition by over six minutes, you get an extra one and a half points. Every second will count for every athlete on every team in every race. There has never been a race like this before. It's a very intriguing concept. I'm representing a whole continent. When that gun goes, I will show what it looks like to give your absolute best. You basically don't want to fuck it up. I think Lionel Sanders is a huge draw card for the international team. He brings an energy and a passion that you need to have in a team, and I think he's got the experience. To have someone like a Lionel Sanders, somebody that wears his heart on his sleeve, I think in a team sport you need to have those kind of people. If you don't race well, he's a bit scary. Yes, there's definitely added pressure. <laughs> I respect Lionel, look up to him, wish I could be more like him in my training and diligence. That's what it takes to be the best. I'm getting to a point where, you know, I'm 33 now. I can just feel the mental, physical, and strategic sense all coming to the forefront now that I've spent 10 years honing. There is nothing better than going toe to toe with another athlete. And it's what you do in those high pressure moments where you have to make a decision, you have to be honest with yourself, you have to ask yourself questions like, is this actually as far as I can go? 
I think the head-to-head -head will suit Lionel Sanders. Out of the swim, he's on his own. He's always doing an individual time trial. People aren't around him. He's used to doing it on his own. Other athletes are used to having other people overtake them or be around. He has that grit, that desperation. He doesn't want to lose. It's going to make him a pretty tough competitor to go against. I just want the matchup to be Jan, Lionel, and myself. I want to see Jan at his absolute best, and I want to see how I compare to that. Jan's going to be out on his front after the swim, so he's kind of going to be solo, and then we're going to get the Lionel-Sam matchup that has just so brought the best out of us. Hopefully then on the run there can just be some big fireworks. If I don't get Jan, I don't even think I'm going to race. I want Jan. There's nothing else. The Collins Cup is it's going to be completely different than what we've ever seen before. It's going to be wild having the top 18 males and the top 18 females there. A race like this is much more about just brute force and who wants it more. You're all in it together. And every place and every performance truly, truly matters. The pressure is higher, the stakes are higher. It's what we train for every day. It's what we dream about. It's huge. It's creating a legacy that you want to be a part of. <laughs>